Part C. Part C says find all the x values on the interval for which the graph of G has a point of inflection. Um, so point, points of inflection will occur when the derivative goes from increasing to decreasing or where the second derivative changes signs. So let's start with g prime of x. g prime of x, as we saw in the last videos, would be 2 plus f of x dx. Um, so if we can find out where this goes from increasing to decreasing, if it does, uh, we're in good shape. Um, I don't like the fact that we have 2 plus f of x. You could probably make a decision off of that, but I think it might be easier to find the second derivative and just see and just show that the second derivative changes signs because the second derivative here is just f prime of x. 0 plus f prime of x. So the my reason is going to be um, because g prime of x, g double prime of x changes signs. Oops, I spelled signs wrong. Sings. All right, so when the second derivative changes signs, you definitely have a point of inflection. So we're going to show where f prime changes signs. Well, if you look at f prime of x, well, here's f of x. Um, it's increasing, 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 increasing. So the derivative of f is always positive until you get to this point where now it decreases, it goes to negative. So f prime definitely changes signs at x equals zero. So I already I already justified it, so I'm just gonna fill in the answer. <clears throat> so that was that. That was easy. Let's go to D. Um, D says, uh oh, mean value theorem, I see. The average rate of change of f on the interval, find the average rate of change of f on the interval. Average rate of change is just the slope. So the average rate of change is the value at 3 minus the value at negative 4 over 3 minus a negative 4. And here it's talking about f. So we don't have to worry about g in this question. This is f. The average rate of change is just f of 3, which is negative 3, minus f of negative 4, which is negative 1, all over 3 minus a negative 4. Uh, that's going to be negative 2 over 7, but it doesn't matter. So, and visually, you don't obviously have to write this, but visually that's just the slope of this line. An average rate of change is just the slope joining the endpoints. Now, now it's talking about the mean value theorem. And the mean value theorem says once you find that slope, it guarantees that there's at least one point on the interval that, that has to have that instantaneous slope or that derivative. But this question says, explain why that, um, it says there is no point that has that derivative. Explain why that fact doesn't contradict the mean value theorem, which says we have to have a point. So by the way, just visually, you can see that there is no point. Like here's the slope. There is no point that has that. And here's the big problem up here, probably. So... If it's going to contradict, if 
it, if it's not going to contradict the mean value theorem, that's going to mean that it didn't fit the hypotheses, the, the conditions. The conditions for the mean value theorem to apply is the function has to be continuous on the closed interval, which it is, but also uh, differentiable on the open interval. So you don't, you're just looking at everything between negative four and three. You can see that it's not differentiable right here. That's the corner. So the, re the reason why this statement does not contradict the mean value theorem is because the mean value theorem doesn't apply because the function f is not differentiable at x equals 0 or, by the way, x equals negative 3. You really only need one to contradict the mean value theorem because both of those are in your open interval. That's that. So, hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you next time.